What's going on, Ghost Squad? Trey here with Ghost Tactical to do a review on the Inner Ordnance or IO 7 inch AR pistol chambered in 556. This will be a conjunction with GearReport.com. So there'll be a written review on this over in GearReport.com and obviously the video here on the platform that you're watching. Uh, before I start out, I do want to make a disclaimer that this gun was sent to me for testing and evaluation. I did not pay for it. So anyone out there that's wondering if I'm going to give a review or whatever, I did not pay for this, but we are going to be fair and honest and uh, put this through the ringer. As you guys know, Inner Ordnance had some issues several years ago with some of their AKs. So we're going to find out if it has any problems with the AR platform in 5.56. And also I want to say this, everyone deserves a chance for redemption. There are some wonderful uh, manufacturers out there doing quality work. And just because someone has a bad gun come out doesn't mean that the, uh, the entire company's trash. So hopefully they fix whatever issues they had a couple years ago. And we're going to see how this runs. So let's get shooting. Before we get going on the range review, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the specs. This is the Inner Ordnance M215 M-Lock 7 with a brace. It is chambered in 556. It is a seven and a half inch barrel with a one and seven twist. It does have the M4 feed ramps and it is AR-15 and M4 compatible. It comes in at about eight pounds and the total dimensions are about 19 and a half inches by nine by three. So uh, it is a nice little gun. It is not overly heavy. It is very well weighted. I think this is a gun that could be used for a lot of different reasons, uh, whether it's a truck gun, a home defense, and it could be utilized as you'll see with the testing coming up it can be utilized by anyone of any size gender weight strength and all that so let's get into the range review all right so the first magazine these are uh from code one ammo these are reloads from a buddy of mine who does this so go check out code one ammo um we're just gonna go through and just try to get as many shots through this and see how it cycles and see if there's any malfunctions we're using the old magazine so let's uh let's have some fun okay so we went through that real quick not a problem i i usually hold even on, on full length ars i like to hold right here i don't like to be here i sure as hell don't want to be out there like some tools out there that will try to get all this uh i'll either come here but most of the time i like to come right here it keeps everything real tight uh, i did feel a little heat from some gas uh but the hand guard is not hot um but i i did i could feel a little bit of heat so the next time i'm going to do a quick uh, run maybe like 10 real quick and i'm going to put my hand up here on the guard and see how that goes because i did feel some heat uh, right here but it's not hot but those gases are definitely getting there so we're gonna go reload and be right back all right so i'm out here with my buddy uh lance he on youtube he's uh off the x go check him out on instagram it's get off the x make sure you go check him out but he's helping me out here today and uh the great thing that he was saying is i can't see what i'm shooting but he said the ejection pattern is perfect every single every single piece of brass flew at a 45 degree angle and they're all probably within a foot of each other, which is really, really nice. It's not over or under gassed. Um, so that's good to know. I wouldn't have really kind of paid attention to that, except that he, uh, he really was paying attention to the ejection pattern, and he said it looks like it's dead on. That's a good sign. That's a good sign with craftsmanship. If, if it's over or under, you're gonna have to make some adjustments, but uh, so far in that first magazine, apparently it, uh, it was perfect. So what we're gonna do on this magazine is we're going to go with the same uh, shoulder, but I'm going to go ahead and grip up here on the hand guard because I did feel some gases coming around earlier. I'm going to go ahead and get at that hand guard and see if uh, how hot it can get. So here we go. Yeah, you can definitely uh, you can definitely feel the gases. The hand guard does not get overheat. It's warm. I mean, you can feel it, but it is definitely not going to burn. But uh, you know, when you're talking about a seven-inch barrel, uh, there's there's not a whole lot of travel for that gas. It's going to have to go somewhere pretty quickly. 
and a seven inch barrel. That's gonna be typical uh, with most shorter barrel pistols or short barrel rifles is the gas. Um, like I said, I could feel it, it was warm, uh, but the hand guard itself did not overheat where I never had to take my hand off of that hand guard. Uh, you can definitely feel the gas and feel the heat, but it's good to go. I wanna ask Lance about the ejection pattern on that one. It was great, same spot, still within about a foot. So yeah. we're still talking a nice 45 degree angle uh, trajectory, all within about a foot. So, so far, it looks like that they've got the gas issue figured out as far as ejection. Like I said, you can feel it up here, but you don't. Ha it's not going to get hot. You don't have to take your hand off the hand guard. So, uh, that's a positive thing. So, we're going to load up another magazine, and we'll keep shooting. All right. So, so far, we've gone through two magazines without any failure to uh, extract, failure to feed, anything. No malfunctions whatsoever. So far, it's run smooth as hell ejection pattern has been wonderful like i said we talked a little bit about the gas issue but it's a seven inch barrel you're going to have that issue no matter what uh, but it's not unbearable whatsoever so the this magazine the fourth magazine we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and use a stabilization brace and uh and do it that way this is kind of how this was designed so we want to see how the stabilization brace works some issues. Okay, um, the weight's not bad. Obviously being a seven inch barrel, um, if you want to go ahead and use that brace, it, it does work. It's not too heavy. Uh, I would say that maybe for someone that has weaker uh, wrists, forearms, if you're forced to shoot in that position, it might be a little bit difficult. Um, but it's not overly heavy. But I can see where uh, even at 7 inches, it's pretty lightweight. But even if you have someone who maybe not be as strong, Maybe a, a young lady or, or someone that's just not as strong may have issues with the one-handed using the stabilization brace. So what we're going to do next is show you an alternative without shouldering the pistol, an alternative that you could use. Okay, so we reloaded our, uh, our final magazine. And what we're going to do is, like I said, the previous magazine, we went ahead with a stabilization brace, fired them off, had a couple uh, you know, failure defeats. But uh, like Lance had said, that's probably because with the weight of this, it very well could have been a limp wrist. And uh, when you don't have the support of anything else and, and all, everything's going on, it might not cycle for you properly uh, if you're limp wristing. So I want to say this, uh, no matter what you're shooting, people might tell you to find a nice, solid, neutral grip tension. I'm going to say go ahead and grip it hard. Grip it as hard as you can, especially with an AR pistol. Uh, and you start getting 10, 10 and a half inches, even more so. Even with a seven inch, we had some issues with cycling and that very well because I was limp wristing it. So make sure if you're gonna do this with a stabilization brace with one hand, make sure you've got a nice solid grip, really firm grip tension because the last thing you wanna do is have uh, some sort of a malfunction that's not gun related, it's on you in a, in a world of trouble. When you're in that situation, you might have to, that extra second or two to get that extra round off could be in line for death so make sure if you're going to go with stabilization brace you're going to get a nice firm grip that being said now with this one like i said it's going to be the weight's fine it's balanced beautifully uh it's not too bad for me but for some people that might be a little bit weaker or might have weak wrists or weak forearms or something like that holding it one-handed with a stabilization brace may not be the answer for you so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grip this like a normal pistol and some people actually like to shoot AR pistols that way. I personally don't, but um, it is what it is. If it helps you fire this and all that, that this will also give you a better chance to get the cycling issues down when you get two hands on there, a little better grip. So we're gonna go ahead and take our normal pistol grip and aim in and see if we can go with this. So here we go.
Okay. Got a double feed here. I'm not sure if that was a limp wrist. It didn't feel like it. I felt like I had pretty good tension. Uh, this is the first malfunction we've had so far, so I'm going to see if I can clear it real quick. And, uh, oh man, it is, it's in there. It's in there good. But you're definitely a double feed for sure. Let me uh, get those out and we're going to try it again. I didn't have any more problems. That ran smooth. That felt good. Um, I've actually really never really practiced and shoot an AR pistol with a, a two-handed normal pistol grip. I kind of like it. Um, it. It felt good. I could definitely keep it on target a little bit longer and uh, manage that recoil a lot smoother than one-handed. So, if it ever comes down from the ATF that you cannot shoulder the brace, or you want to just shoot it without shouldering it, um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend, maybe try the two-handed pistol grip with these things. Uh, I've never done it before. I usually shoulder or I'll go stabilization brace. Two hands on the uh, grip felt pretty good with this thing. I can't say it's gonna feel awesome with a bigger size, but a seven inch, man, it felt great. Once again, the only issue, we had one issue the entire time with a double feed. Uh, we had maybe some uh, cycle issues earlier, but I think that was on me. That was a, a little limp wristing, but uh, that right there, I had one double feet and that was it. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Well guys, I hope you really enjoyed this gun. Like I said, the, the red dot did not come with it, but everything you have here comes with it. The pistol brace and a magazine. Now there is a model that you can get without the brace or so just have the buffer tube. Uh, if you want to do that, you can. I think it's like an extra 100 bucks or 90 bucks to add the pistol brace. But uh, it does come with both options. For those of you that might have your own brace at home, you can get one. It's a little bit cheaper without the brace, and it has the buffer tube already on there. But, uh, guys, I enjoyed shooting this. Whatever issues that IO had in, in the years past, I don't know if they still have them with an AK platform. I love this thing. This might be my new truck gun. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot more reviews with this. But... Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, have some fun with it. So, guys, take care. Make sure you check out Inner Ordnance. All the links in the, the description. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. They're good people. Uli's a good guy. So, uh, once again, thank you to Uli and Inner Ordnance. So, we're going to have some more fun. We'll see you soon. Simplify.